Chapter 8. The Bottle. Linda and Tommy were getting worried. Uh-oh. I hope the bottle doesn't mean that kind of bottle. The alcoholic kind. Assembly time! Three hours. Required tools, screwdriver, hammer, wrench. What is a hex key? I'm not sure what that is. One of those irregularly shaped holes, the thing for turning it? I don't know. So they're trying to build a car for Tommy. That's great. Go to library, out of books again, check community board for babysitters. That would be a good idea. Swing by the wild. New movie playing? Drop by Dr. Walker's. Why is Linda going to the doctor? I assume that's Linda's huh? list, because she seems like the type to make lists all the time. What can we find around here? Oh, that- that painting looks kind of scary. Uh-oh. Probably wasn't a good idea making... Linda sad. Wow, nothing in Tommy's room this time. Where is everybody? But he promised. If he doesn't do it, I'll help you, honey. Aww, building that car. Oh, we gotta help Tommy, come on. Where's the other one? Oh! He's happy! That's a good thing, right? He's happy. I feel like she's gonna... I feel like she's gonna turn around soon, so I don't really want to approach her. There you go! Why don't you stop it too? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Two? Two... Oh, two glasses of... That doesn't look like regular wine or alcohol. What is that? Can't see the label on it, but uh... Did Dan just suddenly <laughs> develop an alcoholic problem? Just got back from the show, if you can even call it that. I didn't sell a single piece, which isn't a surprise given the turnout. I know Dan had other things on his mind, but I told him how important it was to me. It was such a good opportunity to figure out what I want to do when we get back home, too but I can't make up my mind based on such a half-hearted exhibit. Was that Dan's way of telling me he's not ready for me to go back? I don't want to read too much into it, at least not so soon, but it's really hard not to. Oh, Linda, Linda, come on. It's your exhibit, right? Take some ownership into why your exhibit didn't turn out the way you wanted it to turn out. Like, I know Dan's a better writer than you are, and it would have been great. If Dan could have helped you, but come on, take some ownership. Don't blame Dan for this, please. Is that it? That is it. I hope they never shut off this chandelier. That would be terrible. Just hope it will be like this after we leave. Hey, watch this. Wow, for once, it doesn't seem like there's anything in the room, well, besides the journal. If he uses that Hemingway quote one more time, pretty much every night he's either super focused on his novel or too drunk for us to spend a regular night together. That used to be our time. We would put Tommy down for the night, have a glass of wine, two at the most, and talk about our days or maybe listen to a record. Now, I'm lucky to get one night a week where he's sober and not writing. Most nights he has a bourbon, no wait, make that four, and I read in bed until I fall asleep. He tries not to wake me up when he comes in, but you're never as quiet and graceful as you think you are when you're drunk. 
and in a dark room, no less. Of course I want his book to be great, but I also want my husband back. Hmm, that's troubling. Is drinking helping Dan right? Oh, there's something there. Hey, let's turn that light back on. Hmm. No one's coming, right? Oh. oh no, oh no, look at the bottle. That is not good. Alan, hey man, this is gonna sound odd, but I could use some advice. I'm in hot water here because, well, I've been drinking more lately. Man, there's just no good way to write that. I mean, I used to drink and write all the time in school. You remember that, right? I guess I got away from it when we got married and definitely after Tommy came along. But he's in bed by 8.30 every night now. And let me be clear, I'm not blacking out or driving drunk. You know I'd never do something like that. I just have a few drinks while I'm working, safe and sound in the house. A writer who drinks isn't exactly unheard of. Wow, could I sound more defensive? But here's the hell of it. It's working. It's brought back that college hunger, that energy, and in the last week or two, the book's just singing. I don't even know what I'm asking here. Maybe I just wanted to start the conversation. If you get a chance, give me a call. Dan. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dear God. Alone. Same as last time. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Oh, that light's gone now. If he sits down, then we can see what he's thinking. And if he doesn't, then we can just read his thoughts. Oh, oh, oh. oh he's drunk. I thought that was a bottle in his hat or something. <laughs> Did it. Got it to Paul on Monday and just about dropped on the spot. Barely slept Sunday night, but damn it, I got it in. Abject terror is a pretty strong motivator. Linda understood, I guess. She had her own deadline, so at least she could identify, but in the end it was still a choice and she didn't let me off the hook. Can't blame her, really. Sometimes you just have to make tough calls. That's why they're called tough calls. I don't really agree with Linda on that last one. Come on, it's, it's your own exhibit, right? It would be nice to get help, but to almost kind of expect it or even demand it? Come on. Now, there's usually three memories, but that's two, but I don't hear a ringing sound anymore. Let's look around a little bit then. Maybe there isn't. It doesn't seem like there is one. All right. Am I missing something? Search the house. Okay, we gotta read Tommy and Linda's thoughts and find Dan's last bit of clues. Oh, oh no, Daddy. Daddy's becoming an alcoholic. Is Daddy too sad to put together my car? Yes, he is! Tommy, Tommy. Oh, the poor child. How much? Can mommy help out, please? No, we're still missing some clues for- oh! Do not turn around. Right drunk, edit sober. Apparently Hemingway said that. Or maybe someone else did. It doesn't matter, because it's true. To write, you have to be fearless. You have to make choices and plow forward. Surprise the reader, surprise yourself. Make something that matters, not something safe. What does drinking do? It suppresses inhibitions. Yeah, there are typos, but that's what copy editors are for, and it, it's not like I'm drinking all day. I'm fixing most of the stuff myself each morning. Or early afternoon, I guess. I'm not stumbling around drunk all day and pissing myself. I'm trying to create something they'll remember me by. No one can imagine how stressful it is unless they've tried it. The pressure's so bad, I just want to give up sometimes. On those nights, a drink is the only way to turn my mind off and get some sleep. And when the book is done, I'll dial it back. You know, I can understand that this is really helping, but that is a really dangerous line of thought. Pour a bourbon and work on the apartment scene. Oh, I don't know, man. I understand that Dan's book is very important, but... 
Seems like a bee. It could be the beginning to a dangerous habit. And would Dan really want to write a good book but lose his family? I would hope not. Where is everybody? His jogging shoes are right there. He just has to make the effort. Alright, so we've got everybody's stuff now. This week, we can decide to let Dan continue writing, but he's going to be drinking a lot at the same time. Oh, uh, Linda's jogging shoes. What's that for? I'm not quite sure. I forgot about it already. And Tommy wants his car put together. Does Linda want to go outside with Dan? Uh, man. All right, buddy, you need to dial it back on the alcohol. That's probably not good. I mean, okay, what? Okay, so if you do end up writing a good product with the alcohol, you're gonna keep writing with with the alcohol, and you're never going to write without drinking. And that seems like the path to becoming an alcoholic. So I don't want that for Dan. Maybe it's extrapolating a little bit, but I mean, it seems very likely. So, I guess this week... We're gonna focus on Linda, because Linda is pretty upset about last week. <laughs> as soon as we find the jogging shoes... Oh, I think the jogging shoes are upstairs in the bedroom. I remember seeing them quite a few times, except I can't go anywhere right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, there it is. There we go. Let's do that. As for compromise, uh, I want to let Dan write his book, but Tommy... <sighs> oh, Tommy's car... Daddy becoming an alcoholic. Ah, oh, Tommy's damn car. God damn it. Oh, okay, fine. We're building Tommy's car. Sorry, Dan. Oh, I really want to let him write, but the way he's doing it seems so dangerous. May 19th. I have decided, and I am sure of my decision. I do not know which is right or wrong. Only that my choice is my own. It took three days, three days alone, letting whatever calming influence is here, for I am sure there is something, guide my thoughts. I thought about Jay and talked with Jay in my mind, and I know that this is right. I cannot think about the path not, not taken, only the one ahead. And it's not gonna tell us what she chose, or he or she, I guess. And it's very easy to slip into a habit of thinking that of applying genders to people, even though their name doesn't imply anything. Oh my gosh. Kay, I hope Kay chose to live. Oh, look at the bottle of bourbon. That's no good. It's no good. He's becoming a drunkard. No other notes tonight, really? Did I miss anything? Usually there's two notes a night, right? Let's make a quick round around the house, just to make sure that we didn't miss anything. By the way, I just noticed that this house has three bathrooms. That's actually quite fancy. Yeah, I guess that's it. Nothing tonight. Just one thing. It's kind of weirding me out how we can always read this to-do list here, but not any other item. Hmm. After talking with Linda, Dan realized how much his habit was hurting their relationship and his health. He started jogging every morning and quickly found that runner's high wasn't a myth. Within a week, he was setting an alarm to get up early so he could run on the beach before breakfast. And while he sometimes missed the raw energy for of reckless writing, he would have missed his nights with Linda even more. 
When Dan still hadn't put the pedal car together, Linda stepped in and began working on it with Tommy. Dan heard them, felt a pang of shame about his regular hangovers, and came down to join in. They completed the project as a family, and although Tommy was hurt that it had taken so long for his family, for his father to help, he was happy to finally have his toy. Dan put all of the alcohol back in the kitchen cabinet and promised to stay dry on work days, but he had a hard time focusing while he adjusted to writing sober again. He spent a couple of evenings staring at a blank piece of paper, and he never told anyone how hard it was not to sneak down to the kitchen for a drink those first few nights. Keep at it, Dan. Don't become an alcoholic.